Hey everybody, welcome to Adam Makes Beer. Today, I'm gonna show you how we use the Bulldog to transfer some beer out of these small barrels that we're working with. Right now, Josh is inserting really the, the bung portion that is going to create the seal on the barrel. And then he's going to screw that down. And by screwing that little that little, uh, what kind of nut would that be called, Josh? By screwing that little wing nut. <laughs> I almost said, by screwing that winged nut as if it's not called a wing nut. And right now you can see that there's a side portion right here where there's gas and a valve. You're probably good there, man. And so that gas is actually running the whole time. So it's kind of eating up that space right there as far as not letting tons of uh, oxygen in. At this point, Josh, once you're right there, you can cut the pressure on that so you can cut the gas. Feed that down. And then, yeah, slide the gasket and slide the wing nut back up. There's a black, couple of black gaskets right there on the racking cane. That's gonna help create our seal. And then he's gonna spin that second, that second wing nut around to create our seal so the gas can't come up and out. So what's gonna happen is, is this gas line going in is actually gonna put a low level five PSI of CO2 pressure on top of the gas, uh, on top of the beer inside the barrel. And then that's gonna push it up and out. What we have right here is we do have a sight glass with uh, a small, stainless mesh sock in there to catch any uh, char, anything like that, that might wanna come out of the barrel. We're pretty much good at this point to drop our sample into a glass. Oh, and we'll depressure this keg too, because we have not done that. We're just gonna be jumping this into some kegs. These are gonna be used for blending later. I can add all of this to make me seem confident. So we essentially want like zero pressure on this. And then Josh, when we turn that gas on, let's fill this up over the, the pad over here. So anything will just, uh, will just come out right over there. And then what we're gonna do is, is we're gonna flip the gas on right over here and then it's gonna start kicking liquid out through here. This is a, uh, a big old pastry stout that we have aging in barrels. This is gonna build head pressure in here, kick some beer out here. Boom, I'm gonna cut that. Josh, you wanna bring that, uh, you wanna bring that glass over here? My man. We're just taking a sample of this just so we can taste. We're gonna take notes on this because we are gonna be using it for blending. And as you can see, I've turned that gas on and off. I just don't wanna to leave tons of pressure uh, in that barrel, even though we're only using five PSI. I'm gonna open this up, turn the gas back on to the barrel, and it's pushing it in. We've been using these smaller bourbon barrels. These are 15 gallon bourbon barrels from Garrison Brothers out of Texas. We really like them. It's low residency time in there because the uh, surface area difference. Um, those, smaller, those smaller vessels have more wood compared to uh, beer in them. So you can kind of extract flavors out of them faster. We have been working with some of these smaller barrels. They're, they're a lot of fun to work with. What we'll do is when we jump to the next one, again, we're not trying to put tons of pressure on these barrels because these barrels are not meant for like legitimate pressure, right? We're just applying a little bit of head pressure on top. So again, this gas that goes in here is exerting a small amount of head pressure on the beer that pushes it down. And then we have this dip tube, this bulldog that goes down to the bottom. It's pushing the beer back up and out as that goes. Again, we're gonna be blending this beer. This beer is actually a uh, pastry stout that we did called Reveille, Reveille, something like that. Pronounce it the right way. Uh, it, it's a raspberry, pastry stout, raspberry chocolate. 
Uh, we may be blending this up with something else, doing it on its own, but we'll see. When we switch over to the next keg, all we'll be doing is we'll be cutting our pressure. We'll be closing the keg, turning the gas off on the barrel here, and then we'll detach the gas, blow any pressure off of this that would be in the barrel here. And then what I do is we'll just pick the whole thing up, insert it back in the next one and start the whole process over again. We have found that barrel aging like this is really helpful. We do not have a ton of space to deal with. And so this, this lets us like mess around with little small projects like this and, and gives us some flexibility. Hopefully that answers some questions about how we handle barrels here and kind of rudimentary function of operating a bulldog. A lot of times though, you will see bulldogs attached to much larger tanks. Sometimes if you're coming off of a big bright tank, going into barrels, um, different things like that. Sometimes people will be taking full 53 gallon bourbon barrels and putting this in and then pushing and filling up bright tanks, stuff like that. Um, so that's some, some of the different applications that you can use with that tool. Please leave us questions, comments, likes, subscribes. And also if you're enjoying this stuff, please get this information in front of other beer loving friends of yours. Until next time.